Okay, just one sec here. When I did that, the other screen, everything dropped off the other screen. Okay. I don't know why it did that. It's not going to usually do that. Okay, sorry. So I'm going to talk to you about DISC today. Uh, DISC is a personality profiling model. And it looks at your different personality attributes, strengths, uh, natural talents, and of course your blind spots. And it categorizes you into four distinct categories. Uh, as Dawn said, this is something that is used often in corporate training. Uh, I took it a step further. I teach uh, leadership and management uh, and conflict resolution at Lambton and at Brock University. And I inserted it into my courses. And some of the students, by the end of the semester, said, I think out of everything that you taught through the curriculum, the one thing that I got the most out of was, was the add-on, was the disc. So by the end of the semester, I had them using it. So one of the exciting uh, parts about DISC is that it's really, really easy to remember and to use. It's a little bit like Myers-Briggs, but it's much easier to remember and it's much more uh, noticeable. You can um, uh, identify the different styles really easily. So to go on, I'm just curious, for those of you who have, have your camera on, you could just wave. How many of you ascribe to the golden rule? Treat others the way that you want to be treated. Okay. All right, so I think that was probably most of you. Don't you think that's kind of selfish? So why do you get to decide how other people want to be treated. Do you think people all want to be treated the same way? Well, I can tell you they don't. <laughs> so what I would challenge you to do is to elevate the golden rule to the platinum rule and treat others the way that they want and they need to be treated because we all have different needs and wants in our communication and in our behavior. So how would you do that? Well, I'm gonna help you do that. I'm gonna show you what the four different personalities are and how they like to be treated. And when you can change your communication or adjust your communication to communicate with the, each style, then it becomes a very, very powerful tool to create better relationships. So the DISC model of human behavior has four different categories. It was developed in the 1900s. It's evolved under a few different names until we got to, to the current DISC model. So the four different styles are dominant, inspiring, supportive, and cautious. So the Ds are very dominant. They're determined. They're driven. They get stuff done. You know what the old saying, give some, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. The Ds are busy people. They get stuff done. They're natural born leaders. The Is are inspiring, they're interactive, they're influential, they're imaginative, and they love to talk. They're the easiest type of people to spot because they're always talking. The S's are supportive, they're sensitive, they're sweet, they're often shy. They tend to be the nicest people in the world. They love to help others. And the C's, the cautious, they're very careful and competent and calculating. They really like rules and procedures and processes. And they love, love, love their details. You can never give a C too many details. Now, everyone is a combination of each four styles. Uh, so don't think that, that you're only just one. So I'm gonna give you an example and then we'll go through what each style is a little bit more. And you'll start to realize uh, some of the words that are, are used are going to resonate with you. And if some don't, that's okay because everybody's a combination. So let me tell you a quick story about my kids. I have two kids. 
Now, I am an ID, which means I'm a talkative go-getter, okay? My kid, my daughter is a high S, which means she's very supportive, she's shy, she's quieter, she uh, is very sensitive. And my son is a C. He's very, very calculated, logic, procedure, rules. So we've got all four personalities present in our house. So sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge. Now, the example I'll give you is with my daughter. Uh, while she was in school, she used to tell, come to me and she would tell me about what was going on and what her problems were, you know, things with her classmates or her schoolwork or her part-time job. Well, she would start telling me and about midway through her sentence, I would interrupt because I knew how to solve her problem. And I'd say, well, what you need to do is you need to do this and you need to talk to that person and you need to get this done and you need to get that done. So. To me, I'm helping her. So in my, my interpretation, if you tell me something that's going on that's wrong, you're, you're asking me for help, so I'm going to solve your problem. And then she would get really mad at me, and we'd argue. And then she'd say, you never listen to me. And I'd say, oh, I listen to you, are you kidding? I just solved your problem, I listened. And she'd say, no, you don't listen to me, mom. And after I learned this, I realized I do listen, but I only listen long enough to solve the problem. What she needed was somebody to listen to her and sympathize with her and just let her speak. Now, that's not my style because I am a talkative go-getter. Now, when I understood DISC, I completely uh, interact with her differently and it has transformed our relationship so now i listen to her and i say mm -hmm, wow that's difficult yeah so what are you going to do about that so we now have an agreement that she will if she wants help she'll ask for it otherwise mom shut up and listen and nod your head so I now communicate with my daughter in a much more sympathetic and listening manner than I normally uh, speak and deal with people. And it has completely transformed our relationship. She actually misses me, hugs me, and tells me that she loves me now. So all things that were absent before. And my son, who really, really, really likes the details, I know if I'm gonna have a conversation with him, I'm in it for the long haul because there's a lot of details about whatever he's talking about. So just slight, slight variations and adaptations in the way you communicate can completely transform your relationship. Now, I'm going to explain what each style is and give you some descriptive words. But before that, I want you to know that everyone is a combination of all four styles. But what happens is we see that kind of one or two of those styles kind of rise to the top. And those are the natural characteristics and traits and strengths that you rely on in your everyday life. They're how you interact with the world. Now, I understand that things are situational and circumstantial and depends upon the context because if I'm, you know, if I'm in this situation, I do this. DISC is measured when you do the assessment on how you naturally are and how you are in your behavior, in your environment. And one of the things it does is it compares them to see that if you're in the right type of job or uh, you know, you're using those natural strengths. But basically, most people are a combination of about two as the high traits, and then the other two fall somewhere in there. So everybody is a combination, but one or two of them tend to show up at the top. So let's get into it and I'll explain a little bit more about the personalities and then we'll see how we can uh, adapt our behavior. So the D's, the D's are very direct, determined, decisive, demanding, dynamic. They represent about 10% of the population, which is probably a good thing because we might be at war all the time if we all, we're all D's. They're dogmatic. They usually stick with a decision once it's made. They make decisions very quickly they love to tick things off the box they will add things onto their to-do list just so they can tick them off okay they are go-getters they will it's just one after the other go 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 they thrive on challenges choice and control and boy they love to be in control they're natural born leaders 
And the D's love competition. So if you want to get a D moving, make a bet with them or turn it into a competition because they love to win. So they love to be in control. They tend to take the leadership role. Uh, they're really good because they can keep things on time. They can get people moving. And, but D's can be a little bit uh, defiant. So they don't like to be told what to do. So the way that you can get a D to do something is just whisper it, just suggest something quietly. And then the D will take it and run with it. Uh, my best friend is a D. And if I say, well, you should go and do this, she's like, no. And now if I say, well, have you thought about doing it that way? She's like, oh, okay. So the Ds always have to make their own decisions. They don't like being told what to do. So they're very results oriented and uh, they're natural born leaders. They have a flair for the dramatic. Now, when talking to a D, they tend to talk in sound bites. If they ask you how the project is going and you could say, we're on time, we're on schedule, we're on budget, we'll be done next Monday. That's all they want. The other styles need different kinds of information. So they're great to have on a team because they really motivate people to get going. Now the I, inspiring personality, this is the easiest one to spot because they're always talking, always, okay? The I's are influential, imaginative, impressionable, interesting, interactive. They represent about 25 to 30% of the population, which is good because otherwise we would all just be talking and nothing would actually get done. Uh, the I's love to talk as long as you'll keep listening. They like to be the center of attention and storytellers. They're prone to exaggeration, but they're usually funny and they're really good storytellers. Uh, eyes tend to be a bit messy and disorganized, uh, late. As I say, I'm a high eye. I run on an ish clock. So if someone says, what time do you want to be picked up? I'll say six-ish, which means absolutely not before six and probably means somewhere between about 6.15 and 6.45. So eyes tend to be late. Um, <clears throat> They're very spontaneous, impulsive, and very fun oriented. So give a task to an eye and they're gonna make sure that they have fun. So I do that with my class. We always play a lot of games to learn everything instead of just a lecture. They're great to have on your team because they're the idea people. They're innovative and enthusiasm and they'll come up with all the great ideas. The S, I got these out of order. The S style, is secure, stable, sentimental, steadfast, soft-hearted. They represent about 30 to 35% of the population. But some studies will put it up to about 65%. They're the nicest people in the world. They're very calm, diplomatic, uh, systematic. They like security. They like the status quo, and they're often resistant to change. Why do we need to change that? It's worked fine for the last 20 years. Uh, they uh, like to be reassured, they um, value appreciation, security, and they like a pat on the back, but in private. They don't like to speak up in front of others. So if you have a group meeting, if you're on the executive or something, and there's someone that's not talking very much, they're probably an S. They probably have a really good idea, but they don't want to talk in front of other people. So those people are the ones that you need to follow up with after. So S's are good listeners. They prefer to listen than to talk and they'll sympathize with people. So as you can imagine, the I's who are talkative love those S's because they will listen forever. Uh, S's will try to avoid conflict. They want everybody to be in harmony and be happy and in friendship. Uh, they're very easygoing, they're dependable, they're trustworthy, and they can often play the role of mediator between people who don't get along. I have to go back a slide. The C's, the final category, the cautious style. They are conscientious, curious, calculating, consistent, conformist. They represent about 20 to 25% of the population. C 
CFCs are very detail oriented. They love their procedures, policies, protocols, rules. Uh, they thrive on quality and excellence. They can often be perfectionists. Give anything to a C and they'll make it better. They'll return it to you better than how you handed it to them. They're very critical thinkers and sometimes they have a hard time making a decision because they don't have all the details. They'll never have all the details. Um, they are, uh, they love tradition, they're very idealistic, and they very much like to be right. Have you ever had an argument or a conversation with someone and they just insist that they're right? They have to be right. They've got to have the last word. Those are the C's. So when you're arguing with a C, a good, good way to deal with it is say, do you want to be right or do you want to solve the problem? And you would not believe how many people say, I want to be right. So I always say, fine, be right about that. Take the win. Now, let's solve the problem. And then they can get out of that I'm right mode. But C's are great to have on the team because they will set up the procedures and the rules and the agenda and keep everything going along. And they're really good at, a spot, at spotting anomalies and correcting things. Uh, along the way. They're your follow through group. So now that you've had a brief idea of what each style is like, let's have a little test. This is going to be interactive so you can turn on your microphone. So the styles are quite easy to spot uh, depending on their personality. So if we have four of them at the elevator, <clears throat> Who do you think is the one that's going to be pushing the button? You know the type. They'll push the button over and over and over again, thinking that the elevator will come faster if they just press it more often or press it harder. Which style is that? The dominant. The D, the dominant. You bet. They're always in a hurry. They don't like to wait. They like to be in control for sure. Okay. What about the... Um, the one that greets everyone and says hello and talks on the elevator. Have you ever gone on an elevator and someone, as soon as the door is closed, they, they've got commentary? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. ding, fifth floor. <laughs> yeah. What style is that? I. Absolutely. Absolutely. The eyes are great storytellers. If the eye was, was in a little bit of a, a skiff on the way to work, with their car, somebody kind of swerved a little bit into their lane. They'll tell that story when they get to work. And every person that they tell it to throughout the day, the story will get exaggerated so that it was a near death 20 car pile up by five o'clock. <laughs> they'll embellish it a little bit. It'll be funny. They'll keep adding to it. Okay. That's your eye. They're waiting for those elevator doors to close so that they can turn around in the elevator and, you know, ding, the floor. Okay. The one that's holding the door for everyone. Oh, come on, come on. You've, we've got time, we've got time. There's lots of room. I'll that's hold it for you. Who's that? Yeah. Supportive. Supportive, right. They don't want anybody to be late. What if that person had to take the stairs and then they're gonna be late for work? I, you know, I wanna make sure that everybody can fit on. Now, the last one, is watching the S let everybody on. They were originally looking at the elevator maintenance, but now they're looking at <laughs> the the maximum weight and thinking, okay, eight people times 150 pounds. If that S lets anybody else on, I'm taking the stairs. Okay, that one is the C. So they're always looking at, they're always calculating, they're always ensuring things are up to date, that kind of thing. So do you get an idea now on, on how you can spot the different styles? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. So the power of this, because you're probably thinking, okay, well, that's kind of cool. And keeping in mind that this is a very short presentation. When I teach DISC, I usually do at least a four-hour class, if not a full day. Uh, and to get completely trained, it's four, it's four full days of training. So there's all kinds of stuff uh, beneath the surface. The one thing that I really like about DISC is it's like an onion. 
So just knowing the basics on that outside of the onion, you can implement it into your life right away. And each layer that you pull back reveals more and more and more information about each of the styles and how you can um, adjust with them. So when looking at talking to a D who's always in a hurry, you know, how might you talk to a D? Be okay, prepared. Be, be prepared. prepared. Be prepared. Yeah. Don't waste their time. Only give them the important stuff and only give them the results oriented stuff. Get to the point. Get to the point. Exactly. I say talk in bullet points. You don't even need full sentences for a D. So a lot of the time D's, people will find D's a little bit intimidating because they're very direct and abrupt. But as soon as you understand that it's a D, you don't take it personally anymore. I had one student say, I've been, to, I've been through three semesters with a guy in the class and I always thought he didn't like me. <laughs> and now I've learned DISC and I realize he's just a D. <laughs> so you could stop taking it personally. Now with an I, how might you talk to an I? <laughs> just listen <laughs> yep yeah so the eyes the eyes are the different ones so the other three styles like to be talked to in the way that they communicate to others except for the eye don't talk a lot because you're cutting into their talking time because they like to be the talkers so the I's generally kind of want the same kind of communication that the D's do. Just be, be very quick and direct and then let them talk again. So what kind of information do you think they want? Something to feed their stories. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And they'll want to know how fun it is. So who, who's going to be in the group? What are we doing? Is there, you know, is there any, is there a game involved? Is there, so they're looking to make everything fun. Now the S, how might you talk to an S? I forget what this was. The S is supportive, shy, quiet. Get them to help you with something. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's a great way to get them engaged, yes. So the S's are very personal people. They're very sensitive. So if you, if you went to a meeting and you didn't, um, if you're talking to a D, you don't really need any niceties. That's a little bit of a waste of time. <laughs> but the S's, at every conversation, you need to build a little bit of rapport. So you need to ask them how their weekend was or how their kids are mm -hmm. or you know, whatever personalized it is. They need that small talk in order to feel comfortable. But when you're talking to an S, you should probably just slow down a little bit, not quite as loud, and be very sympathetic and sentimental to them and very personalized. And, excuse me, for the C, how might we talk to the C? Lots of detail. Lots of detail, come prepared with your detail and your proof. So they'll want to see where you, what, where you got that information from. Could you send me the link to that document? Okay, they can never have enough details. So if they asked about the report, the D asks about the report and you say, we're on time, we're on schedule, we're on budget, we'll be done on Monday. That would drive the C crazy. They'd be like, but who's doing what? And at what stage are we at? Who's proofread that? Are we following the procedures? At what step are we at? Who's on the committee? They'll need all of the details. All of those details would drive the other uh, styles crazy, but that's what they need. So can you see how the golden rule isn't so golden anymore? So if I talk, I'm an I, so I'm very talkative, and I'm also a D. It's hard for me to be really sympathetic and sentimental. I can be, and I do care about people, and I am somewhat nice. <laughs> I'm a very caring person. 
I may not be the most uh, small talky, nice person. So I have to put a little bit of thought into speaking to S's to make sure that they feel like that they've been heard and that they know that I'm paying attention versus when I talk to, you know, my best friend, that's a D we don't even use periods. We just, we're bullet pointing each other back and forth. That's our way of communicating and it works. So I often get the question, well, isn't that, you know, being fake, doesn't that come off as being fake when you adjust your personality to the other person? Well, the way that I like to think about it is if you were invited to a backyard barbecue with beer and ribs versus, you know, maybe the, uh, an award show at the Imperial Theater, black tie event, would you wear the same outfit? You might. <laughs> I'm not going to wear an evening gown to a, a backyard barbecue pit, but, okay. So you would tend to wear jeans and, you know, a sweater and, you know, some running shoes to the backyard barbecue. But you wouldn't dare go to the Imperial Theater dress like that. You'd be in a nice outfit, you know, a dress, handbag, a suit. So is that being fake? <laughs> Jill, sorry to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I've been to quite a few OPAS awards and you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> but is that being fake? Is changing your clothes for the occasion being fake? No, you're, you're still going. You're just adapting to the situation. So that's what it means when you adapt to different people's personalities and you can talk to them in their style is you're just you're just putting on the most appropriate style to interact with them. When you can act and communicate to them in their style, all of a the sudden they like you more. All of a sudden you have a lot more influence on them and they'll listen to you more. So Karen, so, can we go to the poll now? In just one sec, sure. Okay, thank you. So the real power behind DISC is that people are predictable and each style acts and speaks in a predictable manner. When you can predict how they're going to act, react, you can adapt your style and influence the outcome. You could be much more inspiring. You can be much more motivating, much more influential to the other person and to the results. So there's the power of DISC. I use it in conflict resolution, team building, communication, all of those kind of things. And it's really powerful. So now as Dawn was getting to, we've got a poll. So I'm just curious on um, what style that you think you might be. So you can put the poll up now, Dawn. Hey, Karen. Hello. Hello. Yeah, um, I was just wondering, you know, is, is the style, the D-I-S-C, is it, more of a matter of nature or nurture? I mean, I mean, people born being a dominant or is that something that they learn over time? Uh, it's a combination. So uh, some of it is, is you're born that way, but others, other, a lot of it is born, uh, is, it develops in your early childhood based on your uh, the events in your life but a lot of it is natural. So when, when you, if you did an, a, a real DISC assessment, uh, it, would, it would measure you in your natural being on how you are and then in your environment. So when I did an accounting job, my C really went up a lot because that's what I was forced to do. I was forced to use those skills every day. So I became much more competent in them. But if you leave me on my own, what comes out naturally is my D and my I. 